This is episode eight of the Christian Travelers Network. Today, I'm gonna tell you about one of my most recent road trips all across the United States and share some of my fun stories. Welcome to the Christian Travelers Network, where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Hey, Christian Travelers, so glad that you are here. Today, I'm going to tell you about one of my recent road trips, vacations, etc., um, where I got to, to travel to three or four different states. Um, actually, it might be more than that. Um, several of it was in the car, but I wanted to share some of those fun stories. But before I do, I want to once again remind you to subscribe to our podcast at christiantravelers.net. If you do, this is the last week to be entered in our giveaway for a book called Travel in Tandem with God's Heart by Peter Greer and some awesome travel stickers that wonderfullymade.art donated for us to give away. So super exciting. And if you want to hear about their experiences, you can go back in our podcast a couple weeks. And I also want to encourage you to join our discussion on Facebook um, and connect with other Christian travelers who are exploring God's kingdom, whether it's in their backyard or across the globe. But today, we get some really exciting stories, so I guess I'm just going to dive in and kind of tell you what I've been up to. So I took a week off uh, from work to go travel and support some friends of mine who matter a lot to me. Um, I was a bridesmaid in one of my friend's weddings, um... Her husband is going to be a pastor, so he was going to the seminary, and she was working to become a deaconess, which is just a fancy way of saying a supporting role for a pastor with a lot of theological background. Um, Oftentimes, they help with shut-ins. Sometimes, they help with youth and education. Um, They just help around the church in different ways, but in a more educated role. Um, The two of them met, and... Uh, we got to celebrate them coming together before God, which was really a fun experience. And being a bridesmaid means I got to catch up with some of my college friends um, who were also bridesmaids because that's how I had met the bride. But I also got to meet some of her family and some of her other friends and just develop some really awesome relationships and be encouraged. Totally girly, but we had a night where the bridesmaids and I stayed up and We just caught up on life and shared some of our, like, boy drama, you know, and one of the bridesmaids had some really encouraging advice. She talked about, like, one of the things scripture talks about is that men are the spiritual leaders in a relationship, and in our society today, that's not so prevalent, and it's hard to encourage men in that way because as women, we're totally capable in many ways. Um, to take that leadership role, but then it kind of, I th- I personally believe it kind of disrespects um, the skills that men were created with, um, the skills that men were given. I think in many ways there's overlap. Each of us is uniquely different, and each relationship is uniquely different, but I think that God blessed women with um, just really loving hearts. We really care about people and we want to nurture others. Not all of us are like, that's our go-to thing, but many of us, that is. And then with men, I think they are much more of protectors. They want to make sure that our financials are in order. They want to make sure that you're safe and, you know, just those kind of things. And when as women, we step into that role and we start kind of like taking charge in a relationship, it kind of diminishes those gifts that God has given them and that purpose that God's given them. And so one of the bridesmaids was talking about how um, she encouraged her significant other by just saying, I trust you with your timing. I trust you with our Bible studies. I trust you. And sometimes that's just saying those words, reminding them, affirming them and who they are and who God created them to be gives them the freedom to like do those things and the encouragement to do those things 
And then it's like when they do those things and not being so quick to say, I wouldn't do it that way. Well, no, you wouldn't do it that way, but we get to love on them. And men, um, I encourage you to be there to support the women in your life and encourage them in their skills and their abilities and not always being so quick to just say, this is how I would do it to make it better, but relating to their struggles and their care for others and just listening. That's oftentimes one of the biggest things is just listening is what they sometimes want. Um, But just talking about those things with some amazing Christian ladies was awesome and actually led to some awesome conversations with my boyfriend um, later on in my trip. But anyway, so it all came together at the wedding and um, I know our culture has different things they prioritize with weddings, but they really did a good job of making God the center of their worship service. Like, it's so easy to get all excited about um, the parties and the celebrations and the people coming together and totally forget about who is really binding this relationship together, and that's God. And so they did a good job of making him a central focus throughout the friends and the family and the parties and um, their ceremony as well. So that was really cool to see. And then after that trip, I flew back and my boyfriend picked me up and um, we went on some fun adventures over Memorial Weekend. We got to go on picnics and play soccer and frisbee and mini golf and just talk about God and our faith. Um, he is a worship director, so I got to worship at his church and um, sing along to the music that his praise team leads, which was super exciting and really fun. Um, and because we're dating long distance, it's nice to get to worship together uh, when we can. I think the theme for this week might be just friends and relationships. After that, I have two friends who are moving out to Arizona and they're taking new jobs out there. And so they asked me to ride along with them and just they wanted to have extra people in the car just to keep them awake and drive when needed and all of those things. And I got to ride along with them and just chat and they're good friends, but we're maybe not the closest. I got to learn a lot in those fun little hours driving and talking and laughing together. Um, I think the hardest part for me, um, I don't know if I've mentioned it on this podcast, but last Chris, this past Christmas, I went with my family to California and we drove back and we drove straight back through the night, no stopping, no hotels, no nothing. And we literally were driving the same route. Um, And so we were passing all these national parks and all these like beautiful things. The Grand Canyon was 90 minutes away, like all the stuff and everything in me was just like, can we go? Can we go? Can we go? But yet at the same time, everything in me was are we there yet? Are we there yet? Because it was two days of 12 hours of driving, um, approximately. So it was a lot. But in between one of the, our first night that we stopped, I actually got to catch up with a college friend and her husband, um, and just talk about where they're at. They're actually going to a seminary because he's going to become a pastor. Um, and she's kind of been struggling with career choices, but I think she's really loving working with kids and she's serving as a preschool teacher right now um and would love to be a nanny um when she gets to her next spot and it was just good to catch up and be encouraged and encouraging one another and just seeing how God's working through that in fact when we showed up they were having a little picnic with their church with all the young adults and just talking about how amazing God is and seeing where everyone was at in life and played some games. And so I did a lot in one little tiny week before I flew back and then I'm jumping into all the fun things at work, VBS, Sunday school. We have a family ministry assistant that we just hired, which is awesome because it's kind of just that extra little help that I need to get through the little things of the week. So that's kind of where I'm at, but I wanted to pause and reflect on some of those stories that I just shared with you and kind of turn us back to scripture. And that scripture that I want us to turn to today is John chapter 15. Um, it's a little parable that 
Jesus shares with us. And I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit in this section, um, so bear with me. But if you want to read it all, um, which I encourage you to do, it's verses 1 through 17. Um, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch that withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown in the fire, and burned. Okay, so this little passage is talking about Jesus as the vine. He is our lifeline in a way. And the Father, God the Father, is the vine dresser, the one who sent Jesus into our world. And we are the branches. If a branch is not attached to a tree, if it's not attached to a vine, it's going to shrivel up and die. And therefore, it gets put into the fire, the fire being hell. So if we're not focused on Christ, if Christ is not our lifeline, if we're not attached to him, then we fall away from God and the consequence is eternal damnation. Not a fun topic, but we need to talk about it. But those of us that cling tightly to Jesus, that he is our center and our focus, then we bear abundant fruit and we're going to get pruned. There's going to be things that are sinful and bad in us that God's going to say, stop what you're doing, take a look at yourself and realize that that's not who I made you to be and I need to remove this from you and it's going to hurt. It's going to feel painful to remove those things that have become your identity, but those weren't the things that I made you to be. Those are sinful and they're not focused on me. And so he prunes them away so that we can bear more fruit, so that we can witness to more people, so that we can use his gifts for his glory better, so that we can do all these amazing things. And so Jesus is the one that we cling to. Um, But I keep going back to this thought, and that is the saying that you are your five closest friends. So the people that matter the most to you that are your five closest friends those people will influence whether you cling to that vine or whether you don't, whether their words are of encouragement in Christ or if they're not, whether they're encouraging you to live a godly life and treat your significant other with respect um, or not, whether they're encouraging you in your career walk as you figure out what God's calling you to or not. Um, whether they're encouraging you to love on others and travel with them and be the servant that God created you to be or not. And so this week was really awesome. In many ways, it was peaceful. It was a step away from just the stresses of work. And I'm very task-oriented, and so I can get, like, really boggled down on, like, I got to do this and I got to do this now. And unless I'm stressing out, then clearly I'm not putting enough effort in or I don't know, these weird lies that Satan has fed me. And these people were just like a step away. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are and cling to that branch. And I guess that's my encouragement for you is that maybe as you're looking to this summer and all the exciting trips that you get to take, who can you travel with or travel to or travel for or reconnect with that's going to remind you to cling closely to that branch that is Jesus so that you can be pruned and grow and continue to produce fruit for him. I want to conclude with a little bit of a prayer. So if you guys would join me. Dear God, we are blessed to get to travel, to get to be with friends and family and talk about you. Not every country, not every family, not every community sees you as you really are. This magnificent creator that loves us so passionately and deeply that you would send your son to die for us for our sins, and rise again that we may have life and live with you eternally. 
Lord, we ask that as we go about our travels this summer, that we may just glorify you with our hearts and with our actions and with our lives and everything that we do. And that the people around us may encourage us to cling fastly to you and that we may do the same for them. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining our podcast. Once again, I encourage you to join the discussion on our Facebook page because we just love talking with you about what you see God doing in all of your travels and where God's taking you this summer and just getting feedback about some of these other discussions um, and just questions you have about how faith and travel correlate. So until next time, safe travels and God bless.